Hello everyone, this is 200,000 units and today I have a review of VC213 Arc Trooper Captain. Now this figure was released in late 2021 for me, but early 2022 for most of the world, or well, the US in particular. Uh, it was part of a six figure um, exclusive wave. There was this guy, an Arc Trooper, a B1 battle droid, and three Jedi, we had Ayla Secura, Barris Offi, and Luminara Unduli. Uh, and it was to celebrate the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary with a wave of figures all based off the Clone Wars micro series. Now, although the figure is called uh, Arc Trooper Captain on the card, uh, most fans will know this guy as um, Captain Fordo, the iconic red painted art trooper in the micro series who led the Munalist 10 on both Munalinst and Hypori uh, against Separatist defenders and then later General Grievous. He's been a fan favorite character um, for a long time. He's had several figures over the years, only one of them actually named as Captain Ford, however, and that was in 2006. Um, but yeah, fan favorite character many figures and it's nice to see another update to him. So let's talk about the sculpt. So starting with the sculpt, this figure is a repaint of VC-54, which was the original release of Captain Fordo in the vintage collection called Arc Trooper Commander. Um, and that was designed as a two-in-one figure. You got both Phase 1 Fordo, and then Phase 2 Fordo from his appearance in the Battle of Coruscant. So, looking at this figure, it's um, based on the standard BC-45 mould. A um, couple of changes. The belt has been changed for a more animated style one with these new pistol holders, like so. And then the we have a new animated style pauldron. And then new helmet as well with a range finder. The helmet is removable. Um, give you a good look at it. No, uh, no black stripe on this because it's an animated style, or well, it's designed to be partially an animated style uh, figure, which is a bit unfortunate considering you can still see the molded line for it if you look closely. Uh, paint apps on the helmet. You can see mine is missing a little bit of the visor in that corner. This was, um, or slightly off paint apps were a common feature of this wave when they released and still are today. I know a lot of my art troopers don't have perfect paint apps. As for the helmet, it is a photoreal version. Or, oh, as for the head, sorry. It's a photoreal version of the one that came with Captain Fordo in 2012. Uh, it's a nice sculpt, an interesting one. He's got a little coaty beard, um, slightly sort of tousled hair on top. Uh, an interesting clone head sculpt, not one we see that often. I think it's nice to get some use here. We remove the head for a second. Have a look at the pauldron. Uh, nice animated one. It's got Fordo's um, ammo pouches on it. Otherwise, nothing special. Fits nice on the figure. Oops, looks nice. I like it overall. Uh, rest of the sculpt is fairly standard because it's based off the VC45 body. I'll come on to articulation in a couple of minutes. And then moving on to the belt, you can see it's plugged in and it pops off fairly easily. This is again to accommodate the fact you could swap out his belt on the original figure. Uh, belt is nice, got that thermal detonator. Uh, then it's a, an animated style belt with the main pouches on the um, sides rather than near the front, plus these holsters. And I'll discuss the holster design more when we get to accessories. Then looking at the camera, it's cloth, it's um, attached by this elasticated band. If I can just 
pull it down slightly. It does come all the way off, but I'm not going to bother with that. You can see the figure's got two more plugs in the back for, I assume, the alternate belt. I don't actually have VC54, so I can't say. Um, and then, yeah, standard cloth camera. Um, nice design. A bit of an interesting one, because it's neither the DCW-style camera, which is two separate pieces, or the uh, ROTS, ROTS camera, which has just a small cut in it. Anyway, I'll put this guy back together, then we can discuss articulation. Right then, now the figure's put together again, we can talk about articulation. So, as I've mentioned, it's based off the VC45 body, so articulation is nothing special, if you've ever owned any of the many figures based off that. 360 degree rotation, thereabouts, on the head, and uh, a bit of up down. You can exploit the fact the helmet is a bit loose to wiggle some more motion out there, even if it does show his chin. Uh, pauldron shifts about slightly depending on how high that helmet is. Uh, onto the arms, a little bit stiff, but we get almost up by 90 degrees on the shoulders. Uh, roughly 360 degree articulation. We can hear mine squeaking, I obviously haven't used this much. Um, not hindered by the pauldron either. Onto the elbow joint, uh, about 90 degrees each way, and then stopped by the um, elbow pad. And then a little over 90, bending backwards, you can exploit the slightly flexible nature of that shoulder pad. And for hands, we've got swivel. Then this one is hinged horizontally. Um, now, I will say these joints are very stiff. Oh, and I don't think this one is engaged yet properly, uh, which is a bit of a detriment because I usually prefer my joints working out the box. Same, this is a vertical wrist, but as you can see, it's very tight. It does give us some up and down motion, more down than up. Uh, moving on to the torso, a uh, little bit down, a little bit up, then 360 degrees round. Um, legs, we've got the funny kind of faux ball joint. So as you can see, the front of the leg twists outwards a bit when you move it up. But you can get them into a sitting position fairly well. Uh, and then there is some sideways leg motion as well. Not hindered by the camera because it's soft and flexible. And again, these holsters, nice and bendy. They can go up and down. Uh, knees, standard uh, 90 degrees. And they can rotate all the way round. And the ankles, um, no rockers here because it's an old mold, despite them now being in DVC again. A uh, bit of back, a bit of forwards, and 360 degree rotation. So, discusses accessories very briefly. There aren't many, but Fordo is a man of few weapons, so to speak. So, the only accessories this figure has. As you can see, the infamous unflat feet of VC45 coming into action there. So the only guns Fordo has are his DC-17 blaster pistols. These are based off the ones he uses in the animated series. It's a nice mold. Um, maybe would have preferred some paint apps, maybe, especially the ridged area here. We see it glow red on where Fordo is using it. That might be nice. Um, Fits in the right hand fairly well, um, yeah, though it does mean this is quite a wide grip, so you usually can't get much else in these hands once they've been expanded. Uh, as for the left hand, this requires a bit more work. It's not as designed to be a trigger hand, and it's not a bad fit, though it perhaps looks a bit wonky from this angle. 
uh, as I mentioned, the holsters, these work nicely, slip the gun in like that, fits in well, not going to come out, uh, and then I usually get them out just by levering that back. Um, but again, these seem fairly strong, I don't think they're going to suffer too much damage from too much bending over time. That is it on the accessories front, I've already discussed the pauldron, camera, uh, belt and helmet earlier when I was looking at the sculpt. Ugh. Stupid. I mean, I will just say the feet on this figure are not great, some balance issues. Right then, as for my final thoughts, I really like this figure, I think it's an excellent adaptation of Fordo. Um, that being said, I can't say it's the best Fordo out there, simply because this figure, when this figure was originally released, we got Fordo's unique Phase 2 helmet and um, belt and sash. And honestly, it really annoys me that Hasbro didn't just release that figure as standard. I mean, I would have happily have paid for this to be a deluxe if we got all of Fordo's accessories. Um, I don't mind the slightly animated styling on the belt and um, pauldron, as well as the lack of black band on that helmet. Though I can appreciate some collectors who prefer um, their figures to be fully realistic may be annoyed by that. Um, another reason why VC54 may have been slightly better in that regard. But yes, overall, it's a good figure for what it is, and looked at independently of VC-54, it's probably a great figure. Um, but when you compare it to VC-54, which is, in my opinion, the best clone figure ever, this guy does now fall a little short, especially at a price of about um, £17, this guy was, for me, which is expensive for, a, I mean... A basic clone figure. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this figure, so thank you for watching and goodbye.